book of Galatians chapter 5. Well, thank you for being here. God bless you for it. Don't forget to invite people and call folks who ain't here for whatever reason. Just pray with them over the phone. Galatians chapter 5, beginning here in verse 1. It says this, Stand fast. That word fast is where we get our word fastener. It means you're fastened. Stand fast. Therefore, in the liberty, hmm, the liberty, I have a liberty, I have a freedom. I'm standing fast in that freedom. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free. And be not entangled. Look at this. What's that word entangled mean? You're, you're entangled. That means you're, you're, you're tangled up in so many different things and vices and... and um, you don't know which way to turn. And be not entangled again. Hmm. Christ had pulled me out of this. I'm walking freely. I have my freedom. But then I was lured off my path. Now I'm entangled again. I'm bound with the yoke of bondage. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, be with us this evening. Thank you for, for the songs, Lord, for, for the young boys who are doing the ushering work. And, and that's an amazing, amazing thing to, to watch and see. We need to recognize these young men. Um, thank you for the prayer time that we had. Lord, we're such a needy people. Lord, help us to yield to you in all things. Lord, be with the message, Father. I know your word is, is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. I thank you for it, Lord. There's one here who does not know you this evening, a Savior. I pray today they get it straightened out with you. Oh, Father, draw them. Prepare our hearts even now for, for the invitation. Our minds and our thoughts help us to, to close out the world for the next few moments and tune into you the very best way we know how. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty. Galatians chapter 5, verse 1. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free. And be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. I was counseling with some folks and. um, I had, uh, I had two two meetings this so far this week. One was unexpected, and um, and one I I called, and um, what I want to preach to you tonight it, it it's a uh, it's going to be more of a study type thing. Um, is what I found that a lot here deal with, and um, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna bring it out to you. If we place our faith in Jesus Christ, we receive His grace. Okay which is an unlimited provision. 
He, in other words, he gives us more than what, what we need all the time. The Apostle Paul wrote some tremendous truths that will help us. It'll help us uh, uh, experience this grace that comes from God. It's a special grace. It's, 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 it's more grace. Someone said that Galatians is, 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 is the book of Galatians. You study it. You meditate on it. You, 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 you put it to practice in your life. Uh, um, the book of Galatians is God giving you new desires. That's what the book of Galatians does. Well, what desires, Brother Ernie? What desires does it give us? It's his desires. Not mine. Not yours. Not the preacher's. It's God's desires. Galatians is, is God giving you new desires which are his desires and then equipping you with the power to accomplish his revealed will to you. That's what it is. Now let's learn three, just three truths taught by Paul about God's grace. Just three. There's more, but I'm going to give you these three. And how this grace can remove all shame all fear, all depression, all oppression, all anxiety, all these things. What's our, what's our text verse say? Stand fast. Therefore in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free. Why are we going to go back to where God has took us out from? Well, I don't understand that. Why would I even look in that direction to where I know there's a magnetic force there that's going to draw me away from where I am? Why would I do that? Let's learn these three truths. Number one, Paul learned that who he was, his, his status in the world, did not matter. Why? Because of God's grace. Turn with me to the book of 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians. It's just back. 1 Corinthians 15. We're going to go through uh, somewhat of an amount of scripture. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 9. Again, Paul learned that who he was, his status, did not matter. His traditions did not matter. His religion did not matter. His standing did not matter. Look at this. Uh, 1 Corinthians 15 and verse 9. Look at what he said. For I am the least of the apostles that am not meet to be called an apostle. Because I persecuted the church of God. Verse 10 says, but by what? The grace. But by the grace of God. Look at this. I am what I am. <laughs> And his grace, which was bestowed upon me, 
was not in vain. Now, God has bestowed you with grace. If you're saved this evening, He has given you grace. And He has given you more grace. Did He do it in vain? Think with me. He's given me grace. He gives us grace every day. Just a thought. 2 Corinthians 12, right quick. A few pages over. 2 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 11. 2 Corinthians 12, verse 11. All right. I am become a fool in glory. Ye have compelled me, for I ought to have been commanded of you. For in nothing am I behind the very chiefest apostles, though I be nothing. Paul had done some things as a man that no doubt was shameful. He had not only persecuted the church, but also Christians. He had Christians murdered. And Paul admits he is the least of the apostles. Paul uncovered himself. He took off his mask. Many of us wear masks to church. I want no one to know the real you. Are you with me? What you really do when you're not in church. Who you really are. We wear masks to church. We disguise ourselves. Well, anyway, Paul uncovered himself and said, My identity is not about me. My identity as a Christian, as a pastor, as a preacher, it's not about me. It's about Him. I tried to prepare you more or less for this message. Remember when I said uh, Sunday evening? It's all about Jesus. Tomorrow it's going to be about Jesus. The next day is going to be about Jesus. It's all about Him. It's not about me. My identity, my title, it's nothing. It's all about Him. It's what He's been doing here. Some like it, some don't. But that's humans. But it's all about Him. It's all about him. My identity, he said, it's not about me. It is Christ in me. Now this was his focus. Christ in him. Paul was not one of the original 12 that were chosen. He instead was known for trying to destroy the faith that he now preached. That's what he was known. But his status, his former disposition in life did not stop him. 
His past did not stop him. He knew that his life was all about God's mercy and God's grace. Don't let your former disposition stop you. I'm not good enough. I'm not smart enough to serve. I'm not, I don't, I don't even, be, I feel like I don't even belong in church. That's, that's stinking thinking. You're loved here. Every one of you. Every one of you. You're needed here. Your presence here is needed, is wanted, is welcomed. I was told in one of these meetings, this individual said, what do I have to offer the church? Know what I told this individual? You. <laughs> Offer you. That's what a lot of people are thinking. A lot of people here. Let's go to uh, First Timothy right quick. I told you we we're going to go through a lot of scripture. First Timothy chapter one, beginning in verse twelve. I won't keep you long, it's already after eight. First Timothy chapter 1, beginning in verse 12. Reads like this. And I thank Christ Jesus our Lord, who hath, look at this, enabled me. Hmm. For that he counted me, look at this, faithful. Putting me into the ministry. Verse 13. Who was before a blasphemer and a persecutor and injurious? But I obtained mercy because I did it ignorantly in unbelief. And the what? Grace of our Lord was exceeding abundant with faith and love which is in Christ Jesus. More than what I needed. He poured His heart on me more than what I needed. His grace, His mercy, His love which is in His Son, Christ Jesus, which is in me. More than what I need. Then why do I continue this cycle? This is a cycle. I go good. I'm going good. A couple of months, three months, Then all of a sudden, I'm lured off my path. Why this cycle? Why 
Why does it happen? For that brief moment, you take your eyes off him and you put it on that bondage from where God has made you free. And then you're back. Sound familiar? It could be anything that could trigger that. A phone call from a friend. An odor, something you smelled. It took you back to that time. A song you hear on on the radio. Is people still listen to the radio? <laughs> something you watch on TV and it draws you back. Abstain from all appearance of evil. Be careful with those things. I'm almost done. Again, how be it for this cause I obtain mercy, that in me first Jesus Christ might, might show forth all long suffering, for a pattern to them which should hereafter believe on him to life everlasting. Now unto the King eternal, immortal, invisible, the only wise God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. You see, Paul's past life would have been enough to disqualify him from service in many people's minds. But God's love and God's grace qualified him. And that's all that matters. And that's all that matters. It's God that appoints men. It's God that puts people in position. He's the one that draws them. He's the one that equips them. And I'm going to give you something that's going to shock you. Not the church. It's God. Are you with me? It's God. I hear a lot of things that if a man was divorced, he's disqualified from, from, from pastoring, from preaching, from serving. That's wrong! We just read it here. It's God's love and mercy and grace. No matter what... This man has done in the past. If he's saved and God cleansed him and he's sealed, guess what? If God's going to use him, he's going to put him in a position to be used. And he's going to equip him to do it. Amen. Amen. Remember Moses? Moses. In the book of Exodus chapter 2 verses 11 through 14, I'm just going to go for it right away. And it came to pass in those days when Moses was grown that he went out of, went out unto his brethren and looked on their burden and he spied an Egyptian smiting a Hebrew, one of his brethren, and he looked this way and he looked that way and when he saw that there was no man, he slew the Egyptian and hid him in the sand. And when, when he went out the second, second day, behold, two men of the Hebrews strove together. And he said to him that did the wrong, Wherefore smitest thou thy fellow? And he said, Who made thee a prince and judge over us? Intend, intendest thou to kill me as thou killest the Egyptian? Hmm. Moses, guess what? Was uncovered. He was hiding his act. He was wearing a mask. He had a fake smile. 
Moses was uncovered. He had murdered a man and ran away from God. He left God's will for his life and did his own thing. And the next verses, the, these next verses will tell us, Exodus 2, 14 and 15, it says that Moses feared and said, surely this thing is known. Now, when Pharaoh heard this thing, he sought to slay Moses, but Moses fled from the face of Pharaoh and dwelt in the land of Midian, and he sat down by a well. You can look those up. I told you the verses in, in, in the scripture. You see, when a person begins to make decisions on emotion, on emotion of fear, doubt, shame. When a, per- when a person uh, 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 begins to make decisions on these emotions, fear overtakes them. And it's important to remember that all the steps of a Christian should be steps of faith. All your steps. Even when things go wrong. Okay? Even when things go wrong. Let's go to the book of Psalms right quick. Psalm 37, verse 23, it says this. Remember, our our steps should be steps of faith. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delighteth in his way. Verse 24 says, though we fall, huh, guess what? We're going to fall. It's going to happen. We're going to make a mistake. But don't stay there. Though he fall, look at this, he shall not be utterly cast down. It's okay. Learn from your fall. Learn what brought about those steps that tripped you up. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down. For the Lord upholdeth him. For the Lord upholdeth him with his hand. He's there. Psalm 119, right quick. And then I think I'll close with this. Psalm 119. Verse 1, Psalm 119, where am I? Psalm 119, and verse 133. Psalm 119, and verse 133. Look at this. Order my steps... Where? In thy word. And let not any iniquity, look at this, have dominion over me. Don't let my past, don't let my habits, don't let my strongholds Don't let those things that haunt me have dominion over me. Order my steps, Lord, in thy word. Wow, isn't that amazing? Remember, that all the steps of a Christian should be steps of faith. Steps of fear will never remove your shame, your fear, or anything like that. 
or change your circumstances. It'll never happen. It'll never change if you're walking in fear from a negative position to a positive position. It'll never happen. Great peace have they which love thy law and nothing shall offend them. I want to put down here to here. And I'll continue to study on this and we'll continue this next Wednesday. I pray it was a blessing to you. We were really quiet in here this evening. What God gives me, I have to I have to put it out there. I really do. And um it's for someone. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this time we had. Thank you for your word. The scriptures are so it's so enlightening to me. It opens a whole new whole new world to me. That's the only way I can put it. A whole new world of thinking and, 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 and processing and and all this. It's it's such a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful thing. It's it's like a tremendous light that goes on. I thank you for it, Father. And I pray that those sitting here will be able to, to see that. Give them that light, I pray. Father, bless this time of invitation as only you can. Do the work in the hearts and minds of thy people. I thank you for working in mine and my wife. Be with this invitation, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen.